Today on the Infinite Realm server, it's time to start some bigger projects, so I've decided to split this episode into three aims. First of all, I'm going to be taking on some pretty dangerous tasks, so to follow my dream of having the lowest number of deaths on the server, I need to be better equipped. The first step is to go mining for diamonds for any extra armor or tools we may need. During this mining session, I came across a couple of geodes, which I think are really cool, so I mined a bunch of the amethyst, which might be useful in the future. Now back to mining. That's probably enough. Yo, new shops. The Iron Buddy, one diamond for 32 iron blocks. That's a pretty good deal. Over here we've got Torex's Elytra shop and he's also selling some shulkers and armor, which is pretty cool. We'll definitely be buying some of these sometime. Here we've got four bit wool, selling wool at one diamond per stack. That is a lot of wool. There's more around the back. Fast Wither, two diamonds. I assume this is for soul speed. Yes, very nice. All right, let's get enchanting. After buying pig step from the shopping district, I'm going to head back to Brad's Enderman farm in the end. Oh, I forgot leather for books. Okay, here we go. I'll use this time to kill Enderman, get experience, enchant, experience. combine, enchant. disenchant, kill, get XP, enchant, combine. And from there I'll take some diamonds to the shopping district to pick up any last enchantments I'll need. I should have enough experience from my time at the Enderman farm to combine these final enchantments. Uh... All right, now there is one last thing I can do to fully max out my armor that will make me truly invincible, but that will take some preparation. I initially considered buying gunpowder for TNT, but instead set on making a small sheep farm to make beds. I know I could just buy wool from the shopping district for a very small price, but I still want some sheep for my future base, so I may as well get them now. After traveling tens of thousands of blocks, okay, maybe I'm exaggerating, I finally came across some sheep. Now I don't want to contribute to a lack of animals in the wild, so I'll probably just take one, maybe two. Come on sheepies, this way. Okay. I've just finished transporting all the sheep to the island. I've used two of them to make these two very simple wool farms which each use an observer to shear the sheep when they eat the grass. And the wool is all stored up in these chests here. The rest are just chilling in this pen for now and I've set up a few temporary wheat farms just to get some wheat stocked up. In case Torex sees all of this and wonders why there are a bunch of sheep on the edge of his island, I put up a sign which should explain things. I also decided that this would be a good time to finally sort out all of my items into chests, so finding resources will be a lot more convenient from now on. Now we just have to wait for these farms to gather a load of resources. So for now, let's move on to aim two. Second on today's to-do list is building a guardian farm. There's an ocean monument just beyond the island and I want to take advantage of its resources in order to build my future base because, let's be honest, we can't live in a cabin on a dock for the whole season. Okay, well maybe I could, but that's besides the point. At the moment, the monument is an absolute laser trap. There's no way I can make a farm out of it without dying a lot. So I'm going to need to acquire some assistance. Hello. Hey, I've started working on this big project on Infinite Realms, and I need to clear out the ocean monument near Ireland. Want to help? Not particularly. Thanks! I knew you'd be up for it. How about we get on the server this evening and we can do it then? <sighs> Uh, okay. Talk to you then, I guess. Why isn't Torex joining? He said he was gonna be here. I guess I'll just clear out the monument myself. Wait, why is there a hole here? Hold up, this Elder Guardian's gone. And I'm not getting mining fatigue, which means the others are also gone. Torex, was this you? I can't find any sponge anywhere. Maybe there just wasn't any in this monument. Unless someone took it all first. Well, that was pretty unsuccessful. Although on the plus side, all the Elder Guardians are gone, so we're ready to set up this Guardian farm. For this Guardian farm, I'll be using a design I found by Logical Geek Boy, because it is extremely simple, doesn't involve removing the monument or the water around it, and it doesn't even require the nether, which was my initial plan. All right, let's get some resources. I just died to an end and... <laughs> I've just collected all of this soul sand, and that's just the first item that I'm gonna need for this build. So I think it's time we buy some shulkers from Torex. Two diamonds per shulker, I'm gonna get three. That's very clever. All right, back to mining. This is why you should always play Minecraft with a stable internet connection. I just drowned in the middle of nowhere and lost everything because the game wouldn't let me swim to the surface. I just went back and it's all despawned, so now we've got nothing. I'm just gonna grind for hours until I get all the stuff back, and then I'll do a quick cut to build in the Guardian farm, because it'll be as if nothing went wrong. Alright, let's build the Guardian farm. First, I made a simple outline of the farm to separate the different sections. The two sections between the netherrack will be used to kill the Guardians with soul campfires and collect the drops with hoppers. The other four will be where the Guardians are brought to the surface, 
which will be done using a layer of soul sand a few blocks below the netherrack. I had some difficulty placing the soul sand with all the guardians attacking me, so I took a break and collected some resources to make potions of invisibility. Using these, I was able to work on the farm at a much faster rate. After placing water along the edges of the netherrack, it can then be broken so that any guardians will be brought to the surface and pushed into one of the campfire sections. That's the technical part of the farm done, so I finished by covering it in a layer of blocks which will increase the spawn rate of guardians and built an AFK platform in the sky. I decided to improvise my own storage system, so I created an item sorter above the farm which sorts all loot and cooks any fish that is collected before being stored. I'll admit I may have gone a little bit too big with the storage system, but I like it so it's staying. For now at least, in the future I want to build a storage system similar to this in my future base and all the drops from this farm will go there instead. Now there's one thing left to do before moving on, and that's a test. Oh. So I'm going to AFK here for one hour and see how much loot we get. Alright, that is exactly one hour. Let's see what we got. We have a zombie, because I didn't like the corners of the platform. Wow, that is a lot of prismarine shards. Yo, that's insane. Let's go. Oh, what? Okay, so I may have messed up the sorting system a little bit, but other than that, Look at this, we got cooked cod. Oh, wonderful. Not as much as I would have liked, but that's because most of it's in here. <laughs> okay, I've just fixed the storage system and it is now working as it should be. This farm has been a huge success. If you're interested in building it for yourself or learning more about how it works, I'll leave a link to Logic's video in the description. Whilst we were building the farm, our sheep farm should have gathered quite a lot of wool. That is a lot of wool. Okay, this is perfect. So now we can use this wool to make beds and go mining for netherite. Look at that, full netherite, let's go. Now we are truly invincible and will never have to suffer another death on the server, probably. That leads us to aim three, and this is the one I'm most excited about because I'm going to be building a shop. First, I want to check both the eastern and western shopping districts to see if we'll have any competition and to decide which side of the map will be a better location to set up in. All right, well, this is the eastern. I have been here quite a few times now, so I'm quite familiar with the shops around. Doesn't seem like there are any new ones since I made the <gasps> five diamonds a map instructions here. Well, Welcome, adventurer. If treasure is what ye seek, you must be taking. <laughs> if treasure is what ye seek, you must take a risk losing your feet. Our booty is bountiful, but so is our junk. If you want to try your luck, give the maps a pluck. One map is five diamonds and will lead you to a treasure chest. Treasure can be anything. If you get lucky, you will find something much greater than what you paid. If you get unlucky, you will get trash. You will not need to break any blocks to get to your treasure chest. There will be some dangers that could put your life at risk during the hunt. If you have any questions, contact Emily Blair on Discord. Hmm, it sounds like a scam, but at the same time, I really want to get one. <laughs> I'm getting distracted from my own business. I shall return another time. If we fill this area in with dirt, it could be quite nice to set up over here. All right, now for the west. Now, I haven't actually been to the western shopping district before, so this is quite exciting. Welcome to the west. They've trapped like mobs of different kinds. <laughs> That's really cool. Yoni Yeti knocked KB Queen this way. That's a lot of people. Woodland Mansion and Mall. This is what we are looking for. Ooh. Industrial district. I didn't even know there was an industrial district. I want to see the industrial district, but I don't want to get distracted. Ooh. Oh, achievements. Let's go. Oh, that's Yeti's base over there. Oh, that's looking so good. Oh, these houses all look so nice. I'll take a tour around there sometime. But for now, we have other plans. Okay, Woodland Mansion Mall. So I think there are different areas you can set up shops in and you pay with diamonds in here. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> okay, so here we have loads of different types of logs. I think this is Strikers. Deal of the week. Oh, <laughs> I guess I missed that on the deal. Gravel sand, one diamond per stack. And concrete. I could have bought concrete here for the farm. Oh, no. So we got sea pickles, item bones. Wow, a bunch of random things in here. 10 diamonds for this room. 10 diamonds for this room. Well, that's like four times as big for the same price. What? <laughs> Who priced these? <gasps> auction house. Let's go. So this is Dorix's auction house. It looks so nice. It's closed because it, the auctions are finished. But I hope you refill soon, because I want to get some auction-y stuff. And that's been brought over from Season 1, which is cool. Ooh, is this KB's? He's brought tedious tasks to Season 2! Woo! One diamond per half hour spent doing the tasks. Oh, KB, I'm going to get you to mine so much quartz when I build my base. You're going to have so much fun. Mine depot tool rental. Full beacon, 15 diamonds per week. Sponge rental, 5 diamonds per week per box. Wow. 
What a scam. <laughs> I gotta give respect to whoever built this. This is a really good business. Scaffold, three diamonds per week per box. To be fair, that's not bad. That's pretty good. That's a really smart idea to do recurring payments. That's really clever. And then upstairs, we have nothing at the moment. Unless... Okay, yeah, there's nothing up this. Oh, I almost missed this shop over here. Illuminati. Beacons for 20 diamonds. One diamond for lanterns. One diamond for two stacks of torches. Steel lanterns. <gasps> Competition. One diamond for 32. I wonder if this is from a farm or manual farming. Because if it's an automatic farm, then surely you'd have all the prismarine stuff as well. I'm gonna hope it's manual farming, because otherwise I'm gonna have a big competitor. All right, so we gotta sell sea lanterns for no more than one diamonds for 32. And this is quite a difficult decision. I really like the east because I'd be able to design my own exterior of the building. But here it seems a lot more popular. I think I've made up my mind. Purely because I want to design an exterior and make it look really cool, I think I would like to build the shop in the east. It also means we won't be selling sea lanterns in the same shopping district, so I think it might make a little bit more sense. And also I'll be able to put up some sneaky deals. Okay, so now that I've decided where I want to build my shop, it's time to get some resources. I just realized I went to get resources, but literally all of the resources I need are in the farm. <laughs> so let's get crafting. Okay, I have everything gathered up in these shulkers, so we're ready to get into the build. I started off by terraforming part of the island and planned a quick template to build the shop around. If you hadn't already figured it out, I want to use this shop to sell monument loot because, you know, we just built that monument farm. I wanted to give this shop a powerful entrance, so I designed a gateway using deep slate tiles and some amethyst for a centerpiece. I also built a small feature on the roof similar to that of an ocean monument's roof and set up a simple water elevator for easy access as I'll be using this space for more shop items. There we go, the shop is done. I really, really like how this turned out. I'm really 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 happy that I can look at it in shaders as well because I can actually load and record them now which is really cool and it just oh I'm I'm just so I'm so happy with this it's exactly what I was going for I wanted it to look quite grand but still have some resemblance to a monument and I think the top part really worked well with that but anyway this is the big grand entrance we have and we got a nice big room inside for different items to sell in the shop and around the side here we've got this nice water elevator for easy access to the roof oh wait There we go. And then we have this nice area up here which we can use to sell other items. And it also acts as quite a nice landing spot for any players using an elytra. And then you can jump down and safely land in the water on the other side. And you can land safely in the water on the other side. <laughs> I think I'm gonna turn shaders off before my computer explodes. So as for the actual items we're gonna be selling in this shop, I have decided to split it into five items, if you couldn't tell by the sections from the chests. So we are going to be selling prismarine, prismarine bricks, dark prismarine, sea lanterns, and not dirt but cooked cod. I know I could just sell the prismarine shards and crystals and also ink sacks, but there are a few downsides to this. I mean, the first thing is if you see a sea lantern in a shop, you're probably gonna want to buy it more than if you just see prismarine crystals and shards. Not because it's any different, it's just more appealing. I just feel like the products are a bit more complete if they are in their block form. The only thing I'm potentially missing out from the resources are the ink sacks. Now, usually ink sacks only have two purposes, books, and black dye. Now we can already cross one of those off the list because I discovered we have a plugin or mod or something that lets you craft coal into black dye, which is quite interesting. And as coal's super easy to get as well, there's not really much points on the ink sacks for the black dye. Now the alternative is making books. But let's be honest, if I'm gonna sell books, I'm gonna have to sell multiple stacks just for a single diamond. And realistically, no one is going to want that. Except me, but I'm selling it so it doesn't count. So these are the items I'm going to be selling. I have already done some math just to calculate some prices relative to the value of a prismarine shard, just so it's not really unbalanced. And to show the prices and the items for sale, we are going to be using these glow item frames which I've collected on the chests. Achievement! I just glowed ink sacked a, a sign and it made it glow. So you have sea lanterns going 32 blocks for one diamond, which matches our competitor. Then we have one diamond per stack of prismarine, one diamond per 32 prismarine bricks. That's because if you see in a crafting table, it only costs four prismarine shards to craft one block of prismarine, but it actually costs over twice as much for one prismarine bricks, hence the price being twice as big. Then we have dark prismarine going one diamond for 24. This is because it uses the same amount of prismarine shards as the prismarine bricks, but it also uses one black dye. I know earlier I said black dye is really easy to get, so it shouldn't increase 
increase the price this much, but I want it to because I'm the shop owner. <laughs> then we have one diamond for 48 cooked cod at the top. This may seem expensive, but I'm going to put some deals up so it's going to chop down the price quite a bit. That's also why we have this sign here. So we're going to put up a deal here and one over here as well. So this one over here is going to be a survival deal. So it costs three diamonds and you get three stacks of cod and 32 sea lanterns, which would usually cost five diamonds. The reason behind this deal is simply because I know sea lanterns are probably going to be the most popular thing here. You get some food, you get some sea lanterns. Overall, it's a pretty good price. This deal over here is much simpler. It's basically one of everything from this downstairs room for three diamonds instead of four. Okay, we can now clear up all of our stuff because the shop is finally complete. I've just carved a bit of a path here, so it's now finally joined up to the rest of the eastern shopping district. I almost forgot to actually put the items into the chest. So I've just AFK'd at the farm for a few hours and finally put the stock in the shop. Look at this, we are ready for business. In case you're wondering why some of the items are tilted, that's just because those chests are out of stock because Turns out you need quite a lot of resources to fill these things. I could also put a floating name at the entrance of the shop, something a bit like this, but I have no idea what I would call it. Leave a comment if you have any ideas. But that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and subscribe!